Rape culture even shows up in military social media. This week, Congresswoman Jackie Spear of California protested a sexist Facebook page ridiculing women in the Marine Corps. I almost expected to see this trash, Spear said. The military is not policing itself. Congresswoman, tell me why this piece, uh, you know, the, the Facebook page, was important to you. Well, I was actually called by a whistleblower hmm. and told about a number of websites, a n- number of Facebook pages. Uh, I wrote a letter to Secretary Hagel, and it was Facebook that took down that page on its own. Okay. I did not make a request that they do so. Facebook said it violated their own rules. Now, here's the issue. Um, Free speech is free speech. But if this was um, conduct done during working hours on servers and and computers owned by uh, the taxpayers of this country, then heads should roll. Uh, It was vile. It was uh, misogynistic. And it really speaks to the fact that the culture in the military is so ingrained Mm -hmm. to think of women as chattel that that kind of uh, communication could be put up. But what was most interesting was kind of the vile comments that were made about me Hmm. afterwards. Mm Yeah, of course. I mean, and, and Anu, it feels to me like like what what, what Congresswoman Spear is saying there is kind of the stand. I mean, it's representative of exactly what happens when survivors come forward, right? Then you suddenly are the problem, not the assaulter, not the attacker. Absolutely. And that kind of language is just a day in the life in the Marine Corps. Unfortunately, I yeah. experienced that was the receiving end of, of a lot of that, even as an officer. But I, I, women are subjected to vile behavior every day from fellow enlisted and officer ranks throughout the armed, armed services. I mean, I was subjected to rape jokes, daily sexual harassment, daily discrimination. And that kind of culture is something that, that, that leads to condoning of sexual assault. And so there's, there's a link between the language and the behavior and the, you know, the, the, the jokes and all of that and this pervasive crisis of sexual assault in the military. If I can build on that, actually, there's research that there is research mm-hmm. that shows that in units where sexual harassment is seen as tolerated or sanctioned by the superiors, um, the rate of sexual assault in those units goes up uh, by four times. So, so when when it's part of the culture, when people see it as permissible, then in fact they act in these ways. I, I, a part of what is is constantly hard for me every time we do one of these segments, and the very fact that we have done it now repeatedly, is I just keep thinking we have this this kind of mythology about our servicemen and women. We have this notion that that our veterans and that our enlisted, particularly in a volunteer army, are the people we should be most concerned with protecting because of the sacrifices that they are making for the country, and yet the unwillingness or, or ineptitude in fixing this just flies in the face of that myth. I mean, I gotta, I gotta say, I keep thinking, where are the women? Like, would this be such a problem if we had women at the top in the military? I think it is notable that it is women electeds, like Congresswoman Spire, who are bringing this forward and demanding a legislative solution mm-hmm. because there are so few women in the military who have made it to the highest. I mean, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that we've ever had a female joint chief mm-hmm. of, the, of the armed forces. So if, if we had that in there, if we were changing the culture on a day-to-day, more women women higher up, uh, then would this change? And I think that the answer is yes. And I think that it's going to change because women in Congress, we are now taking over. We have more than ever before, and they're going to demand it, and they're going to show that leadership. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, we do know one place where the women are, and the women are in the 113th Congress. In fact, Congresswoman Spear, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for the fact that being part of this 113th and this class of the first, uh, you know, largest number of women ever, I, I am, I'm beginning to believe that maybe there's a possibility that we can get this done this time? Well, I certainly hope so. So thank you to Congresswoman Spear in San Francisco. Also, thank you to Shelby, Anu, and Sabrina.